We have another social studies skill, and that today is going to be graphing. So we're going to learn about charts and graphs. So how do you create and interpret a graph and or chart? So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So why do we use graphs and charts and what are the different types of charts and graphs that we uh, typically end up using in social studies. Well, we use graphs and charts for various different reasons. Uh, and basically, it's so that we can illustrate or summarize some sort of data, we've compiled data, we've collected data. And now we need to make it easier to read and to be able to read it quickly and efficiently is the reason why we are creating uh, graphs and charts and in our social studies here at the junior high level, we typically look at three different types of graphs, we've got line graphs, bar graphs, and pie charts. So let's take a look at the first one, shall we? The first one is a line graph. And a line graph shows patterns that take place over time, we have an x and a y axis, and the horizontal axis, that's the one that's running across the bottom, usually, this marks a unit of time, whereas the vertical axis is going to show the change in those in that time period. So a unit of change. There's straight lines in a line graph, and you can see that there's peaks and there's valleys as well. And th those peaks and valleys are connected with a line. And that's how we get the name line graph. And of course, we will have a title and an axis, uh, both the x and the y axis will be labeled as well. And this example here that I have, these are the Euler's points since the 2010 season. Uh, that's the title of my graph. I've got points on the vertical axis, uh, and it goes from zero to 125. And then the year along the horizontal axis, starting at 2010, and ending in this uh, most recent uh, run that they had 2021 and the 2022 season, you can see the peaks and the valleys that are taking place there. And I'm going to show you how to create this graph in a little bit. The next graph that we have is a bar graph. And this is used to compare two or more sets of data. And usually, um, well, there's one or two ways you can do this, you can have the bars going horizontally, like what I have here, or you can have them go vertically. Um, and they are either way, they are measured in regular interval units, the bars are typically labeled, and, and they are colored differently. So that you can easily distinguish between the, the different bars are there. And then of course, we have to have a title, and you have to label your um, your x and y axes as well. So this chart here, this graph, this bar graph, this is the results of the popular vote that we had during the 2021 federal election. These are the this is the popular votes. So along the bottom, my horizontal axis, this is my popular vote in percentages. And then I have my parties on the uh, vertical axis, and you can quickly and easily compare uh, the parties that got the most popular vote. And then the last type of uh, graph and chart that we do in social studies is that of the pie chart. And this is used to compare the size to the parts of a whole. This is calculated in a percentage of 100. And it divides the circle proportionally based on the percentage. And of course, there's going to be a title. So in this example here, these are the immigration categories from 2006. And as a whole, the pie, the, the, the circle graph will take up 100%. And you can see how it's divided amongst the four classes of immigration categories that we had in 2006 with economic immigrants being the most at 55% family class second at 28% refugees at 13% and then other at 4%. So let's try this, let's give this a shot. And let's create those three uh, graphs and charts that we just saw. So I've got some data here. This is the first one that we're going to be creating is a line graph. So all I did is I collected this data from NHL.com. And I put it inside a Google sheet. 
So these are the Euler points. I've got the year in column A, and I've got the amount of points that the Euler's got in column B. So to create uh, this line graph, I'm going to highlight the data, taking the titles with it from cell A2 down to cell B14. So I'm just going to highlight it. I will select insert, and I'm going to insert a chart. Now for this, I want a line, uh, I want a line chart, a line graph, and it already recognized that I wanted to create that because of the way the data has been set up, it, it points itself, it lends itself to a line chart. And you can see here that it's already done my uh, X and Y axes, it's already labeled them for me, my horizontal axes is the years, and my uh, vertical axes is going to be the points that the Euler's got. And we can see the, the points here, the little dots, the circles, they are connected by a line. So all we need to do is change the title. So we can double click on the title. And these can be uh, Euler's points since 2010. And there you go. Now there's other things you can do with this graph. If you double click on it, you can change the styles and you can change the titles and you can have a legend and colors and things like that. You can customize it, but that's basically how you would create a line graph. Now, if we head over to a bar graph, again, I've got my, I have my data already here. I got this from online. This is the result of the 2021 federal election. And let's say we want to show the popular vote. So again, I'm going to highlight the data. And I only want the party and I only want the popular vote. I'm not interested in the seats right now. So I will highlight the party and popular vote. I will take the parties with me, as well as their popular vote. And again, I will click on insert chart. And for this one, I would like not a pie chart, it thinks I'm, I want a pie chart because it's it's got these percentages here. But for this one, I want a bar graph instead. So I am going to take um, the uh, bar graph here. And you can see that I've got a horizontal bar graph is what I picked my popular vote is the horizontal axis down here, my vertical axis is the party, and we need to change the title. So we'll call this popular vote federal election of 2021. And here, uh, we should because it's a good idea, we should change the colors. So let's change up the colors of each of these bars just to make it easier to read. So liberals right now, they're blue, typically, they're not blue. So if we double click on the liberal bar, we can change that color to red. Conservatives, we can change to a darker blue. The Bloc Quebecois, that's usually their color. So we'll leave that as is. NDP typically is orange. And the Green Party, well, guess what? It's in their name, they are going to be green. So that is a much easier bar graph to read now that we have changed the colors. Now remember, we have our labels on the uh, horizontal and the vertical axes, and we have a chart title as well. Next one that we're going to do is a pie chart or a pie graph. And what we'll do is we we'll select our data again. So I'm taking the uh, from a two down to B five. And I will insert a chart. And it should recognize and it does it should recognize that I want this data to represent or to be represented in a pie chart, because all of my percentages will add up to 100%. And this one will not have any um, labels on the x and y axes because there are no x and y axes. However, we do have a title that we can um, that we can choose to put and this will be immigration category. Oops, I can't spell categories. And this is from 2006. Okay, so we can leave it like that or uh, it's always fun to um, have our pie chart in 3d. So we can go and click on our oops, sorry, we can click on our chart type, and we can choose the 3d one, or you can also even choose if you wanted to, I guess, you could choose the donut one too, which also kind of looks cool. But either way, it's still considered to be 
a pie chart. So what you can head out and do right now is go out and find some data, maybe survey your class even, and try and create a line uh, graph, a bar graph, or even a pie chart. Good luck.